infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, earlier this month, I came across this fascinating study in a journal called Phytomedicine which described the effects of tea infusions of wormwood plant on what is considered the second most important parasitic infection of humans, schistosomiasis. Well, joining me to talk about schistosomiasis and the study is co-author Pamela Weathers, Ph.D. Dr. Weathers is a professor of biology and biotechnology at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Dr. Weathers, welcome to the show, ma'am. Oh, hi. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so before we jump into the study, let's talk about some of the basics. So if there's listeners that are not familiar um, with the parasite and some of these uh, drugs, we can give them a little basics. So what is schistosomiasis and how significant of a problem is it? So schistosomiasis is um, a parasitic worm, basically. There are all kinds of parasitic worms. And um, this particular one is rampant in many um, developing countries around the world, especially where um, water systems are infected, you know, lakes, streams, because it's transmitted uh, through snails, and then it the snails are the co-host, and then the parasite will get into the person who might walk through, say, a puddle, um, in the field while they're doing agriculture or when they have to go to a, you know, a, a body of water for, wa- um, to bring, um, water back for cooking or laundry. And so they get infected. And that worm then starts to, uh, migrate through the body and, you know, ultimately causes a lot of, um, malaise and ultimately can kill a person. Once they are, you know, overwhelmed with this or other diseases, because many times people who are infected with schistosomiasis are also infected with malaria. Okay, well, what can you tell us about the standard treatment for schistosomiasis? That's a anti-helminth called praziquantel. Yeah, praziquantel, and it's a pretty affordable drug. It does work very effectively. There are always concerns that when you have a single drug that you'll ultimately get drug resistance. That's sort of like the natural course of evolution um, because these worms and, you know, infectious agents are very resilient and ultimately that will occur. It hasn't really occurred to date, but one always is worried about it. So one of the things is that we were looking at is these plants, Artemisia plants is what they're, that's their genus, that's their Latin name, but there's different kinds of Artemisias. So there's one that's called Artemisia annua, which is sweet wormwood or sweet ani. It's a annual plant and it currently makes the most potent drug in treating malaria called Artemisinin. But there's another one that grows in Africa called Artemisia afra and that's indigenous to Africa, uh, southern Africa. And it does not make hardly any artemisinin. So, but we looked at this because it called wormwoods for a reason. People had historically for millennia used them to treat themselves for all kinds of ailments and worms was one of them. Do they know what kind of worm? Well, maybe not necessarily like we do now. But in those days, you know, you were sick, you ate something or you had a, um, tea made out of this plant, and you could treat yourself. That's how modern medicine basically came about, because we started that way. Might have been a good plant, might have been a bad plant. Not all plants are safe to eat or to make tea out of. Excellent. So what's the, so now we got some of the basics. Let's go ahead and take a look at the study itself. Uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Weathers, how was the study performed, and what was the population of this trial? The population is in the Democratic Republic of Congo in the Manima area, and that's on the eastern um, area of uh, 
the, the DRC, it's sort of towards Uganda. And people were screened. You have to look at their stools, their feces, to see if there are eggs of the worms. And they know a lot of people have this, so it was a good location to do this study. Mm -hmm. And if they had eggs in their feces, then they were included in the study as long as they didn't have any other complicating factors. And they were then given the tea or made from either Artemisia annua or Artemisia afra. And then a control group received praziquantel. There were 800 people in the study. Half of them got praziquantel. The other half got one or, or the other of the Artemisia teas. And the tea was delivered as one liter spread out over three um, divisions or three aliquots within a day. And it was one liter containing five leaves that were used to make the tea. Five grams of leaves. Sorry, not five leaves. <laughs> and the five gram per liter tea was given for seven days. And then fecal analysis for the eggs. In other words, they had to go and look for eggs in the feces of patients over this period of time and tracked when the eggs disappeared. And so what we found was people who received either of the teas had their eggs disappear much faster, about a, a week faster, than people who received praziquantel. All of them also were cured. So everybody got rid of their eggs in the feces. So they were all cured. However, the people who got the tea, each of the teas, um, had almost no side effects. So it was far more benign to the patient in terms of the misery you can face with some drugs uh -huh. that you're given. And so those were two of the positive aspects. It worked faster and fewer side effects. Right, and you mentioned side effects. Uh, is that a concern with praziquantel? Uh, it's not real bad side effects, but mm -hmm. you know, you know, anytime you're sick, you don't want to feel worse. True. So mm -hmm. it's not um, side effects that are going to be, you know, uh, it, it's not like a chemotherapy where you know you can really get sick, you lose your hair, and all that for cancer treatments. So it's nowhere near like that. But you know, diarrhea could be upset stomach. Mm -hmm. Um, that sort of thing, abdominal pain sometimes. Um, so those sorts of things were tracked, and there were far fewer of those, almost none, with um, the Artemisia teas. Mm -hmm. and, and were you surprised by these results? Um, I guess we were surprised a little bit by the efficacy of both of the teas. Mm -hmm. um, and we weren't surprised by the... Um, benign effects of the teas because we already kind of knew some of that. We had already done a trial also on malaria and people had done that over the years and many of us have seen other instances where people have used the plant, you know, medicinally and they don't have any side effects. And so that's, you know, very positive because, you, you know, you don't want to kill the patient with side effects while you got rid of the disease. So um, that's, that's a, that was a very positive outcome. Um, but the fact that it worked faster was surprising. Yeah. And yeah. we didn't expect that. We just had no idea. You know? Right, right. Um, any plans of any follow-up on this research? Well, we've, most of our efforts have been towards the malaria, which is, of course, deadly and, and, and much more rapidly deadly to so many people. Um, however, anything we do with one is going to inform us about the other. And so looking at what's the best way to deliver, for example, my lab has been studying, and I am a plant biologist, by the way. I'm not a parasitologist, mm -hmm. but um, I've been studying this plant for, for 30 years. And when you think about it, um, you want to have um, the minimum amount that you need to get a cure. So do we have to do it for seven days? Maybe we can do it for five days. We don't know what that is. Five grams, three grams a liter. Should we deliver it as dried plant material, powdered dried leaves in a capsule? That has some advantages. It offers shelf life. You can also use the capsules as a um, suppository. And that's good for little children mm -hmm. who won't drink the tea, maybe, or can't swallow a capsule. 
So those are options, you know, that have to be explored. So we need to do those sorts of things. At this stage, what we're looking for is funding to help us do those next steps. And we would like to see it such that people in these de developing areas could manage this better when they're out in remote locations in the bush because they don't have ready access to clinics. Mm -hmm. and the clinics are very primitive, as is the infrastructure. Bad roads, hard to get places. You might have to walk a day to get to a clinic. That's not very, you know, um, productive for the um, well-being of those people overall. Sure. Uh, taking a sick child to a clinic, you the child might die. Now, I noticed in the um, WPI press release that uh, you said you would like to see this out there on a global uh, global sphere. Um, yes. What, have you heard anything from anybody? Is there any response to that? Well, uh, we're, we're seeing um, that the groups, this was a very international group of people mm -hmm. working on this. And the funding for it was from private um, individuals, mainly out of France. And La Maison d'Artemisia is trying to get, in many countries, the establishment of small gardens of Artemisia that can be used more locally. And they're having quite a bit of success in many countries. And so we think that this is going to move forward. We, there are a number of ministries of health that are now seriously considering adding this to their pharmacopoeia for treatment of some of these artemisinin susceptible um, diseases like malaria, schistosomiasis. Um, <clears throat> but it isn't just the artemisinin. It's the other parts of the plant that are important. Because if you recall, I said Artemisia annua has artemisinin in it, but Artemisia afra has almost none. And they both, both of them worked really well against schistosomiasis and against malaria in the stu study that was just published this week. Interesting. All right, any final thoughts on your research, schistosomiasis, the, the plant, anything? Um, I think that it's important for people to always think about what are the needs and the cultural lifestyle of the people who are suffering from diseases because you want to do things that mesh well with their culture. You can't instantly think you're going to change something. So you have to keep that into pers in perspective so that you can um, treat people um, most effectively and cost effectively. This is a really inexpensive approach. And if it works, it will be so beneficial for these people. And if you know, it falls within their culture. Take a medicinal plant. Take an herb. That's what they're used to doing. They're not so used to taking a tablet or a pill. And if that's only available through a pharmacy, maybe they can't get there to get it. So that's that's a challenge. Very good. It was a very interesting study. I read it from start to finish. And uh, I will go ahead and post it for listeners on the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, when I publish the podcast. And I want to thank you, Dr. Pamela Weathers, for spending the time with us and sharing your research. I appreciate it. You're most welcome.